This is what heavy weapons do to people's lives in eastern Ukraine. It was 1 a.m. when the shelling started. Nelly and her husband were fast asleep. They woke buried under the rubble of their home and they were rescued by their neighbors. We woke and our home had been completely destroyed around us. I prayed that if we were to die, then please God make it quick. I have been in so much emotional pain. I wanted to die. We had everything we needed in life. Now it's gone. People try to comfort us, but it's so very hard to cope. Around 400 people used to live in this village before the conflict between Ukraine and Russian-backed separatists started more than seven and a half years ago. Now, fewer than 40 remain, and most are leaving because they're afraid of more shelling. Tysa's home was also hit. She's lived here for nearly 50 years. She's diabetic and spends most of her $100 a month pension on food and medicine. She can't afford to rent another home, so she's moving to her daughter's a few kilometers away. The Ukrainian soldiers are constantly here. They seem to do rotations every six months or so. They were living in different houses in the village when the recent shelling started. Friends help her collect wood from the destroyed shed to use as fuel at her daughter's house. I was frightened in 2014 when the house was first shelled, but I was with my sick husband. This time I was alone and overwhelmed with fear. This village hadn't suffered any shelling for the last couple of years, but that all changed on November the 14th. Residents tell us that they don't know which side opened fire first, but there are exchanges of fire across the more than 400 kilometers front line almost every day. And it's important to recognize that there are terrified civilians living in villages like this one that have been destroyed by Ukrainian army shells just a few kilometers from here. There are what seem to be disused Ukrainian military posts in the village. The military says its base is away from where the few remaining civilians live. Occasionally, a Ukrainian soldier appears. Everyone seems to be leaving. This man asks us if we want to buy his horse. I can't leave her here because I don't know when the shelling will start again, he says. Russia says its recent troop build-up on the border poses no threat to Ukraine. But fighting has got worse and with no sign of any lasting agreement between Ukraine, the separatists and their backers in Moscow, Nelly and her fellow villagers are joining the more than a million people who have already been forced to flee their homes. Charles Strafford, Al Jazeera, Novelsky, Eastern Ukraine.